Good afternoon and welcome to a new video. So um, I'm making a video which I hope will be uh, quick about the targets package. So I already made a video about a very similar package called Drake, which is a build automation tool for R, written in R, I guess mostly in R, for R. This is targets, which is actually the successor package of Drake. So it's written by the same uh, author or maybe authors um will landau seems to be the um the lead author at least and um it's a package um that allows you just like drake to build um to build a data science pipeline and to really automate a lot of the uh very repetitive work that comes with uh, with setting up such a pipeline which is basically rerunning stuff and maybe you don't you don't want to rerun everything you maybe you just change some parts of your pipeline you only want that to run drake and targets allow you to uh, really simplify this whole process so i won't go into a lot of details because if you are curious about the concepts you can watch my drake video which is i guess still pretty relevant however if you're starting a new data science project and you want to use such a tool i would advise that you use um, targets instead of drake so if you just want to get the uh, general concepts you can still watch the other video which i will link in the description but uh, use targets instead so instead of going too much into the technical details uh, how targets work etc i won't do that for two reasons first of all i'm still let's say a beginner with targets so i'm using it at a very, very beginner level uh, way of doing stuff, so really just the basic functions. But I will show you that it still allows you to do a lot of cool stuff. The second uh, reason is that there is a manual, a uh, targets manual, which is very, very complete. And maybe let me zoom in here a little bit, um, which you can find online. I will also link it. Here I'm on sh chapter 11, so what about Drake, where the author explains well. Uh, Drake is super superseded because or superseded. I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, because uh, well, after you know four years of community feedback, it turned out that a lot of things um, should get changed, and it, I guess it was easier for for the developers to just start with a fresh package instead of um, instead of using Drake. And maybe you know, um, I guess that maybe some things would even have been very impossible uh, or impossible to do um, inside Drake. So that's why that's why you um, you have also this table here that uh, tells you if you have already some uh, Drake projects that you you know you have here all this um, these functions. Some stuff here are, are unsupported but I guess there's good reasons for that and uh, and probably uh, other ways of doing uh, certain certain things. So anyways um, read also read the manual if you're really interested of course uh, because that's I, I won't tell you anything that that isn't in here maybe one little trick that i am not sure is discussed to be honest but um which uh, which i uh, i um, i found uh quite quite useful uh which is reusing the um the targets that you create in one pipeline into another um and I'll, i will explain why that might be useful um, so this is this is um, a little toy paper, let's say, that I've been working on. Um, maybe I can show you the paper itself. The idea that I had was that, uh, as you may know, I live in Luxembourg, which is a um, landlocked country. We have a lot of uh, people from Germany, Belgium and uh, France coming here to work every day. And of course, we cannot really, uh, you know, just close our borders. That doesn't work like that, especially in, uh, you know, in the Schengen area, which we are part of. And it would be probably very counterproductive in our case. So, the issue with that um, is that we, I argue here in this in this paper, that we cannot, as Luxembourg, this little country over here in the middle, we cannot take decisions alone. We have to consult with our neighbors. So these are the. Um, the neighboring regions okay so you have the belgian region here on the left in the south you have the french region and here the on the east you have the german border regions and all of this constitutes what we call the greater region okay so 
the greater region right here. So we would need ideally to collaborate. We're trying to do that. It's not always easy because uh, when when things are going rather well in one region, um, things might not be going well in another. So you you know it's very difficult to coordinate the um, policy responses. So. However, I do sh I, I show you know uh, here that uh, well if you look at um, if you if you take four uh, features and you you want to predict so this this is the daily positive cases in uh, Luxembourg right um, if you want to predict this red line the the TA is in the the test set well you can do that very um, actually I was really surprised very well using as features weekly positive and this well lags lags of weekly positive cases for france germany and belgium for the border regions of france germany and belgium as well as google mobility data google mobility data for luxembourg which i use here as a kind of uh, proxy for lockdowns okay so we we can see here this spike here in around april that was the first lockdown in luxembourg so this is the per percentage change in hours or time spent at home so here you see that there's a huge spike and here again around christmas there was kind of a soft lockdown uh, so you see here this spike again and what uh, it turns out that uh, indeed you know the features these features the lags three week lag uh, one week lag in germany and three week lag in belgium are quite important especially the lags in belgium um, and uh, i kind of use that as evidence to to suggest that we should work together. This is more of a, I mean, it's not part of any project, work related project or anything like that. It was more, um, I wanted to do two things with that. First of all, I want to learn about targets. I wanted to see um, if uh, my intuition about this landlocked uh, country, you know, being kind of uh, in a situation where it would be very difficult to control, if that would turn out to be okay. And I wanted to write a paper using open source software, open data, make it uh, completely, uh, you know, freely available. So I want to kind of do this project. Uh, and in the end, I'm quite surprised by the results. Uh, I wasn't expecting that to, to, to work so well. Anyway, the way I did that, um, I used targets to set up this paper and to write this paper. And one reason I did that is that every week we get new data. Every week we get the weekly data from from the week that just uh, you know that just finished so i run this this every week and i check the results i keep doing that right and i keep writing whenever i find time and motivation anyway uh, that's not really the point of this video the point of this video is to show you that i set up this project using is here a targets file so a targets file uh, at first you start with some you know you load some targets types which I will explain what that is um, some functions I will also show you that here I set this thing but uh, I don't think I'm still really using it uh, that's kind of to build your targets uh, you know in, in parallel but uh, not really using that yet because it goes very fast in my case here so um, I load my packages so I load all of this and then you create a list of targets so here I download the data so I build this package with this function that gets me the, the data, the weekly data for, for all the, the regions. I save this in the QS format, which is, uh, I guess you could say it's some kind of, of bad RDS format. So if you uh, if you don't know what RDS is, RDS is some kind of compressed format that allows you to save R objects. And this is available in base R and QS is, is better because it's faster. I'm not sure if it compresses better, but it loads and, re and writes uh, much faster. And, and then you, you build your, st your stuff like this. So for example, this is a map okay, that I built. So this is the name of the object, and this is the function that builds it. So here, this function does not take any arguments, and it's inside my function script. And I will show you uh, this function later on. Then I, I do all this stuff, right? I do a nor This is my normalized data. So here, I have this function that normalizes the data. And every, you know, every target, or not necessarily every target, but targets can be, can depend um, from each other, right? So, for example, this one, this uh, normalized monthly data depends on two uh, targets, depends on the raw weekly data and on the population data. Population data you see over here and raw weekly data you see over here. And this, you know, this all these dependencies will be automatically managed by targets. And let me show you how that looks like. So I, you know, load my... 
By the way, if you're curious about my editor, so this is a question that comes very often. This is Spacemax. I wrote a blog post about it and I made a video about it. So you can you can look for, for those things if you're, if you're curious. Anyway, uh, let's uh, load targets. So if you see here, my editor, Spacemax, automatically sets the working directory to the uh, folder that I'm working on. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at uh, the files I have. So I have this targets file, which is the file you're seeing here on the left. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Um, this is targets.r that you're seeing on the left. Targets is where the targets get saved. So all these QS things, all these objects get saved in there. Then I have a data folder, which contains some uh, data, which I don't think I use now. That was when I first started the project. I don't think I use that now. Um, oh, yes, yes, I do. I do because it has the Google Mobility data, which I load uh, right here. Yeah. So I, I load here. So this is the data that is inside uh, the data folder. Then I have a folder with my functions. I have a license, which uh, for just like for all my projects is the uh, do, do what the fuck you want uh, license. Then I have the paper, which contains, uh, if we take a look, maybe I should open a terminal that would be would be easier. Um, yes, uh, maybe I need to move my head a little bit. Yeah, so I think, yeah. So if we take a look at the uh, paper, uh, you see that I have uh, an RMD file, which is the file that I edit and I, uh, uh, and I will show you that as well. Then I have um, a tag, which, which built automatically uh, whenever I, I knit my RMD file, I have the PDF itself, and then, you know, I have my bibliography, I have the archive thing, etc. Right. So let's go back to uh, Spacemax. So now that I have all this, I can actually take a look. There's a function called tar -vis network. This thing will open uh, a browser on my first desktop, which will... Um, what's going on? Okay. Weird. I have a problem with my keyboard shortcuts. Yeah, I think I was on another layer there. So this is the um, the network of all the different objects, right? That um, that constitute the the project. So here, there's this function that I don't use anymore, which sits here all alone. But you can see that all these uh, functions, so triangles are functions which are up to date go into different things and they build different uh, objects, they build the maps, they build um, data frames, they build here yeah, the, the splits for cross-validation, which are here. Then I have, you know, some training data, I have some uh, workflows for my, some uh, tidy models workflows for my models. Um, I have a model table, I have uh, the, the predictions, etc. And then this all goes into the paper. Now, um, that's one. That's the, like the first benefit of using uh, targets is that imagine keeping track of all this in in your head and imagine having to uh, you know whenever you you imagine you you just I don't know you you update you update the splits you change something there you would need to know that you have to rerun everything that depends on that so this thing and then uh, that those things and then this and that well it would be a huge mess so. This already simplifies the process. Whenever one target is not up to date, so imagine that I um, um, imagine that I remove something, not at the beginning because I don't want it. To, I mean, it runs fast, but I don't want to uh, spend too much time. Maybe maybe I will just uh, yeah maybe I will just remove plot var imp. So I think there was tar delete. So this will delete a target. So plot var imp, and now if I run tar make, oops, if I run tar make, this will make everything. So this will rerun my project, but as you see, it skipped a lot of stuff because this thing, this plot var imp, did not depend, um, or rather whatever depends on that. For example, this thing does not depend on, on this thing, on plot var imp. This you know, model did not depend on that, etc., etc. The only thing is the paper. The paper depended on plot var imp, so plot var imp gets rebuilt, and the paper gets rebuilt, everything else can be skipped. Um, and actually, here I have a problem with my references, which is weird, because they should be there. Um, oh yeah, I think I had changed that. Weird. Uh, I changed the name of my references to bibliography.pip, I don't know why this is there, but it's a good excuse to 
um, to show you how the paper looks like. So the paper is an RMD file. Uh, very, very standard stuff. Uh, let me just correct. So this is not references, but should be bibliography. Maybe let me run bibliography.pip. Let's save everything. Let's go over here, tar make. And this should now run just the paper, okay? Because plot var imp is already built, right? It's not out of date anymore, so the paper gets rebuilt. Um, this is a standard uh, RMD file with uh, the archive um, template, which you can get from the um, articles uh, package. And if you look at uh, the uh, RMD file, it's mostly text. Um, here I, I have some LaTeX code for these uh, commuters. Uh, so this is, uh, I'll show you again, maybe how it looks like. This is this figure, which I could have, I guess, inserted with Markdown. Uh, so, so this just shows the uh, daily, daily commuter. So, for, for for scale, so Luxembourg has a population of six hundred thousand persons. Four hundred thousand persons work in work are in the labor market. Out of these four hundred thousand persons, two hundred thousand, so half the labor force, lives outside of b the borders. Okay, so it, it's huge. So imagine if I don't know how many how many people work uh, in America, but I guess something like maybe 200 million. Imagine if every day 100 million people would cross the borders to work in, in the US. So this is what happens here. So that's why I think it's quite important to take this into account. Anyway, if you look at my R code, it's just calls to tar read. So tar read reads in and uh, for example, reads in, I can do that in my, in my console, reads uh, a target. And it will, you know, if I'm in an interactive session, it will so show uh, my, uh, my 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 plot over here in this case. Um, and if I, you know, if I uh, do something like, for example, the epidemic map is a list of two maps. So if I tar read, I will get, uh, you know, the two maps will show. But if I tar load, what this does, epidem map. What this does is it loads that into my current interactive session. Okay, so now I could do something like stri uh, structure epidem map, and this gives me the structure, which you know is, as I said, a list of two um, of two GG plots. So that's why it's, it's very this very confusing uh, elements over here. But this is basically a, a GG proto object. So it's my GG plots. So this is a way also for you to interactively, maybe you know, if you want to interactively. Uh, explore your ob objects. You could use star load to do that, um, and in the paper I use star read to read them and to just show them in the paper. Right. So the paper compiles very fast because it actually does not run any computation at all. Everything is run into the pipeline, so my paper uh, compiles fast. Now, what I also find very important, uh, you know, I, I'm not uh, I'm, I'm not a scientist. I was one uh, so in a, in a previous life. But I don't, so I work in science, um, if you want. I work for the uh, Ministry of Higher Education and Research in Luxembourg. So I work a lot with scientists and I still do. I still enjoy, of course, as you know, working on my, in, on my blog and working on my videos. I still enjoy exploring data, working with data. And it's, it's also part of my job, actually, to do this kind of stuff. So, but I don't do like research, you know, and I, I don't necessarily, it's not something that I... Uh, that is part of my job description. It's not something I do, you know, writing papers, doing research. But I wanted to try this stuff. And what I also think is quite important is if you're working on a paper, of course, you know, uh, sharing your results via paper is the thing you have to do as a scientist. But what I think is also quite important is trying to share your results with an even wider audience and maybe not necessarily your results as such, but kind of your methodology, kind of, you know, your your code, etc. in a blog post. I think it's super important to write blog posts. And what I think is really neat in the R ecosystem is that you can go from this paper over here to a blog post very easily. So now let's imagine that I want to write a blog post about these results, which I did, by the way. Uh, I will also link it if you're interested. You can read that. Um, I will show you how my blog post looks like. Uh, it should be this thing. 
So this is my blog post. Now, the problem if you write you know, your blog post using Blockdown is the environment. If you remember, if I run, if now I run Blockdown serve site, right? To, to compile this into my website, to compile this post. My, uh, the, the, the session here will be started in the directory of my blog. So this will not find all my nice uh, objects, on all, all my nice target objects, because my nice target objects are, oh, I was on a wrong layer, my nice target objects are in this folder. And this is not the folder where I have my blog. This is the, um, this is the folder where I, you know, of my, of, of my paper. So this is an issue. Okay, so how can you run this and compile this while getting the targets which are saved by the way um, if I show you so let's um, if they are saved over here so this if I go into objects this is where they should be so these are all my objects so how can I get to those objects and use them and show them in my uh, blog post because I don't want to rerun them I don't want my blog post to set up the exact same um, targets pipeline that would be a waste of time so what I want to do is let me maybe zoom in again what I want to do is in my R code I want to reuse my targets and this I can do with this thing with R with R is a package that allows you to run uh, an expression a function or whatever you want uh, either with an environment or uh, with, in this case, a directory. So this, what this kind of does is it internally, you write, goes into this directory and runs, oops, didn't want to do that, and runs this thing, runs targets, tar read epid curves. So this will read in my epidem epidemic curves. And then the same over here, this reads my plot mobility. And using that, I can very easily set up my pipeline to compile my paper. And then if I want to write maybe a blog post or I want to, I don't know, do something else, I can using with R still go into my this project and get the objects I need without needing to copy and paste the, uh, the whole pipeline, which would be a huge waste of time. So. Um, to summarize, to conclude this uh, video, I would highly recommend that you s learn tools uh, like Targets or Drake, well, Targets rather than Drake now. Um, you can still watch the previous video, which I will link, because it um, I, I discuss how I basically built a package which contains the data science pipeline, which would make it easier, you know, to document, easier to share, etc. This thing is a simple it's a simple targets project, which, uh, you know, it's, it's this simple file, the simple targets file, uh, which you can see over here, um, and uh, which calls these functions, which I didn't show you, so let me do that right now, um, which contains all my functions here that do everything I need to do. And by the way, I didn't start with the targets uh, project. I think this is important to, to realize. I started with uh, a simple and uh, good old uh, script, which contained all of my steps and all of my code, which also allowed me to think about the problem, to think about what I wanted to discuss. And then when I started to get something that started to look interesting, this is when I started refactoring the code and putting everything in uh, in, uh, in this uh, targets um, way of uh, or targets pipeline, let's say. And actually, you can even look, you can even still find down below that I still have, yeah, I still have some old code as you as you see here that is commented, that is basically uh, the same which I have up here, but in a, you know without t using targets. So. Um, I, to conclude, learn targets. I think it's quite useful. It allows, it saves you a lot of pain because you can also then, uh, you know, uh, go back uh, and to, to look at previous compiled objects, just like in Drake. It makes it, I think, also easier to document because someone that is interested only needs if you have, if you use very explicit uh, function names, 
you almost wouldn't need a comments because you can quite easily see okay this gets the data this gets the population this does this this does that and then plus if you're looking at the uh, network which is here this really makes uh, i mean it might seem confusing at first but it's better than having nothing <laughs> because then you would need to somehow write some documentation to, to 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 discuss this at least here you get it for free right so um, I would highly recommend you you check it out. So I will link uh, all of that in the description. And uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you know you have other, if you have some questions or if you want me to explore something else, let me know. Uh, I might uh, might just do that. So have a great weekend.